I was thinking about beauty standards, and very often the word Eurocentric is put in front of a lot of beauty standards. One of the things the late Kevin Samuels was accused of was pushing Eurocentric beauty standards on black women or grading black women against a Eurocentric beauty standard. And very often, a lot of the physical critiques that we might have for women, for instance, the, the weight issue, is dismissed as Eurocentric, is dismissed as, oh, it's just, you know, you have been indoctrinated, so far indoctrinated in the white patriarchy that you can't see past your nose. And it got, it got me thinking about male beauty standards and whether or not maybe there might be a Eurocentric base for some of our male beauty standards. So for instance, I was watching a Vice mini documentary earlier today about gangs in Haiti. And the young man that they were following, he was a, he was a gang member, face all tatted and this, this and that. He had a pretty patchy beard. And in that moment, I realized he's actually the rule. When I think back to Nigeria, when I think about Africans I've even met here, that's the rule. The exception is the full thick beard. That might be a little different for my people, Igbos. Igbos tend to be really hairy. <laughs> but on average, when we look throughout the continent, a full beard isn't the norm for multiple reasons. Number one, I don't think it's, it's the norm stylistically. A lot of people associate that with struggle. Number two, when you think about the climate of Africa, it's counterproductive to make your face hotter. But then number three, I, I don't think compared to our white counterparts, the average African is as hairy. He that hath a beard is more than a youth, and he that hath no beard is less than a man, and he that is more than a youth is not for me. When we're talking about male beauty standards in a Western context, it seems to be an open and shut case that a full, thick, luxurious beard should be the standard, but it's not considered Eurocentric. However, when we talk about things on women, whether we're talking about weight, whether we're talking about petite features, it's very easy to dismiss them as Eurocentric. So I guess the, the question that I'm posing or what I want to introduce to the chat is, are both things Eurocentric? So full beard, small nose, or are neither one Eurocentric? And we just have a preference for full beards, for instance, that's universal, or small noses on women that's universal. I think that is worth a conversation. I did a poll. The first question, would a full beard be considered part of a Eurocentric male beauty standard? 24% said yes. 76% said no. Ask another question, would a small nose be considered part of a Eurocentric female beauty standard? 58% said yes, 42% said no. Ask another question, would a lean slash fit body be considered part of a Eurocentric beauty standard? 11% said yes, 89% said no. Now, what's, what's interesting, y'all know I'm African, I was born in Nigeria. Kevin Sammons, for instance, would talk about if you were to look at pictures of Pam Greer, you know, women in the 60s, women in the 70s, they were not big. I'll take it a step further. Any of you right now, you can Google images of, have a far back, you, you can go to slave pictures, uh, pre-colonial pictures of West African women, or you can even go to ancient Kemet if you want, or even, you know, we were talking about the woman king a couple months ago, the Dora Malaje, the king's guard. You will be hard pressed to find examples of African men or women who were not physically what we would now consider a Eurocentric beauty standard. I say all that to say, I think sometimes, I'm guilty of this too, as a quote unquote hotel. Sometimes we give white people way too much credit. We give white people way too much credit sometimes. And with certain things, I'll be the first person to tell you, yep, yeah, it's their fault. With other things, I think it's a bit more complex than that.